All right. Okay, so welcome everybody for this week's uh, session of the Warner World Machine Learning Seminar. And it's a great pleasure to have Wu Chen Li with us for this, uh, for this week mm -hmm. uh, from University of South Carolina. And uh, yeah, he will share with us about transport information Brackman divergences. Mm -hmm. So Wu Chen, you have the floor. Okay. Uh, thanks, Franca, and the organizer for your nice uh, invitation. So it's my great pleasure to give us a talk. So today I want to talk about the so-called uh, transport uh, information program divergences. So as we know before, you know, open transport and information, you know, theory is very important in the AI side for constructing the, you know, kind of like a loss function for us to minimize or maximize. So in this study, I try to, you know, combine open transport and the, the programmer divergence, try to give you a construct a family of uh, distance functions, let's say its properties. So here I focus on model three part is somehow kind of, I mean, everything is in this, uh, uh, without the models, I, I think combined with the models with these new network functions would be uh, also very interesting direction in this field. Yep. Okay. okay. So basically, you know, the AI modeling inference and sampling, are, are, you know, they are quite connected problems. Uh, it's very important in nowadays, you know, so, you know, the alpha goal, people can play with the, the goal using this AI method. So uh, also for this kind of like general generative adversary networks, basically you can change the colors from different picture, you can change from zebra to houses, you know, for this image processing using this kind of like deep learning method, it helps. I mean, it give you a, a some kind of like uh, interesting way of, uh, of parameterize the mapping functions. I mean, nowadays, you know, this can also be applied into the so-called protein, uh, protein and folding problem, some kind of like a biology. You also can do some kind of like a sampling problem using this AI method. Uh, the last most important ones, you know, I learned from Franca, you know, Angstroth and, you know, <laughs> uh, before we work on this so-called the Bayesian sampling problems. So it's also very important, you know, um, it's kind of a, also kind of a, a inference problem. You minimize some functionals in the probability data space. And in the end, you try to uh, move towards or to a target distribution, okay? So all these problems, are, you, you, if, if I don't consider the modeling, don't consider this AI parameterization terms, it's kind of like minimize, we, are, we, we can minimize some function in the probability space, okay? So now how can we write down this formulation and how can we design a sampling algorithms that could be very crucial, okay? How can we efficiently to do that? So I, I give a very abstract, <laughs> my understanding of the learning, okay? Maybe it's, uh, it's too, too narrow, but it's in very abstractly speaking, we are doing the following problem. It's, so we can see the so-called data measure, so which, which means it's a summation of the data measures. X here lived in, a, uh, you know, in, in some sample space, which can, can be in an image space, so which can be a, a large dimensional, okay? Now, basically, we try to find a model, a parameterize the model, okay? And we try to minimize some details, something we want to, to construct between your data and the, the model, okay? And basically, so of course, you can do model free way which means in the end, you, you, your row x theta will equal row data. That is the perfect situation. But if x live in a larger dimension, that could be, you know, not as simple to do that. So maybe you can consider some parameterize the model. Okay, the parameterization can be different depending on like the problem. So here's a several interesting mathematics behind the, uh, the, the machine learning problems, which are, I'm interested. The first one is so-called distance function. So how can you measure the difference between your data and your model, okay? So of course you can do some L2 distance, you can do some you know, Euclidean distance. Um, and nowadays people also can do the optimal transport distance, you can do the TL divergence. There are many different ways of writing down these distance functions, okay? And this will be the key of this talk. I will talk about some other interesting distances. Uh, now, suppose distance is fixed. The others are very interesting uh, 
viewpoint for this learning problem is so-called parameterization. There are several ways to do that. You can consider false space. The false space means I don't consider any particular model inside. So rho theta can be rho itself. Then you can use some kind of like uh, uh, sampling approach, try to really work on this infinite differential optimization. You write down some different equations, try to solve that. That's okay. The classical uh, uh, Markov chain, uh, Mark Markov chain sampling algorithm, they are doing that, okay? So called the MCMC approach is working on that. Also, you can consider some new network to parameterize the density. So basically people call the generative models. So you, you write down your mapping function and you try to say uh, that the mapping function has a particular shape and you write down some uh, basis over there and you, you solve the problem, okay? Also people call the Boltzmann machine Gaussian or Gaussian mixture is a particular type of this kind of uh, parameterizations we are considered. So basically you, you try write down a final dimensional version, final dimensional shape of this probability densities. Of course, we can also use the so-called classical numerical methods, which I like a lot, the so-called finite volume method. So basically it's become a purely discrete uh, stuff for the dentists. But this parameterization truly depends on this distance. So there are some relations between each other. That's the story I want to tell you. So depending on your problem, you can create some efficient parameterizations. Now this is also true for the optimization side. So uh, as long as for the global level, we understand what's going on for this minimization, you can create a efficient gradient descent algorithm, okay? Some, sometimes we call it preconditional. So if you know the global, the, in the distance of, in this, you know, uh, abstract view, you, you may increase some efficient gradient, gradient descent or some like primal dual type of algorithm, okay? So in this talk, I, I just major, make, make a wide focus of this thing. We, for, we consider the construction of distances. A general, a general distances for us to, to start with, to, to, to work with. Now, what is the distance? <laughs> distances have a long history and uh, it is, you know, everyone working on it is kind of a very hot topic in the information theory and in the learning community. So basically, you know, classically we can still so called Euclidean distances. Okay, so basically it's just some, uh, you can consider the final dimensional probability. So you just take the difference of them, and take a square root, and this is what happens. Uh, also, you know, on the other side, people call the, the statistics or statistical geometry or some mass physics background, people are interested in so-called the entropy, okay, which is P log P type of stuff. This function is so useful, and the people use construct the, 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 the way to measure the difference of functions using this entropy and its hashing operator, okay? So one typical example, and one of the, I could say, one of the most important example, in my opinion, is so-called kruback uh, lerberger divergences. I hope everyone can say it. So it's rho p log p over q, okay? I will give you more details later on. So it, it is also called the so-called relative entropy, okay? So this function is, has the very nice properties and it's, it's also very useful in the, I mean, nowadays I would say it's one of the key formulas in, in, in the AI uh, methods, okay? And this one can, you can use this to construct like different generalizations, okay? You can get a different type of the divergences, okay? So there's a wide field that people call the information geometry try to study this kind of uh, generalizations, try to maintain some mass properties. So basically in this talk, I'm here, you know, I'm from the you know, optimal transport side from this, uh, uh, people also call it mover distance, kind of like, uh, you know, this, uh, people also call the vessels thing, uh, distance. This distance, I want to generalize this distance into this field. So basically I also want to create an analog of the optimal transport type, mover type distances into this, classical information uh, uh, approach, okay? Classical information divergences functions, okay? So here I want to give you one uh, terminology uh, explanation. The divergence means something like a distance, but it's not a symmetry with uh, two components of P and Q. So people call it divergence, okay? It's distance like 
functionals. Okay, and I try to explain why I do this uh, generalization and what happens this kind of distance or some moral distance, some PDE related distance may be useful in the you know, inference problems. Okay, so the one thing here, I always talk about, talk about this kind of like informa information divergence, right? So what is the information? So I don't know, actually I, I look at the Wikipedia, uh, I double search it, so I get the following answer. So basically it is a kind of like a study of a, a quantification, storage, communication of information. The field is at the intersection of probability theory, statistics, computer science, statistical mechanics, information engineering, and electrical engineering. Okay. Now, in the mathematics viewpoint, especially I'm working on the applied mathematics. So basically, I see three keywords which I, I'm interested in this field. Number one is entropy. So which function we start with. The second thing is so-called pragma divergence. So it's kind of where you, you create a, a distance, like distance-like functions. Then you can start the duality, all these kind of interesting properties allow you to do efficient computation. And you have, you know, any we hope, hopefully we can gain some nice, uh, you know, uh, computational and uh, computational and uh, theoretical properties. So what is the pragma divergence? I also searched the Wikipedia. This is the thing we we, we gain. So basically, we we can do the fault. It's the pragma divergence is generalize Euclidean distances. Okay, so it's the following thing. So give me a a, a function phi. Let's say phi is differentiable. You can see the phi y minus phi x minus its gradient of phi times y minus x, okay? So there are three important examples for this pragma divergences. Number one is Euclidean, Euclidean distance. Basically, you, you change this function phi to a quadratic function, let's say z squared, phi z equals z squared, and you plug in, you get a y squared, this is x squared, and this gives you two x and a y minus x, then you get this square distance, y minus x squared. And then you plug in the entropy, which is, you know, z log z, some, you know, uh, log function times z. Then you plug in, you, then you work in the following function, which is y, I, I, I skip a lot of calculation, but it's the result. You get the y log of y over x minus y minus x, okay? So this is the, the famous uh, KL divergence. Now you can also consider the so-called uh, Itakura Sato divergence. It's also very, very famous. You just plug in negative log Z into this formula. You can just say Y over X minus log Y over X minus Y, okay? So all these three different functions just tell you how, what's the difference between Y and X. Now, distance from Euclidean distance is symmetric. The KL divergence and the uh, Itakura Sato divergence are not symmetric, right, with respect to x and y. Okay. So it has nice properties. So you know, we just you know, this is like very you know elementary uh, uh, checking on these uh, functions. You can say this is non-negative. It's non-negativity. So uh, it is Hessian metric. So something a Hessian operator is. It you know, works uh, behind these functions. Basically, you just let x and delta x. You, you just, you know, you do this expansion on this one side, like the y equals x plus delta x, and you do the expansion. Then you will gain some operator here, which is the hashing of a phi. Okay. So basically, all these three functions are related to the hashing of the the, the, the initial function, the phi function. The potential function you are we are looking at. Okay, uh, this high operator is of phi is with respect to the Euclidean metric. Okay, and typically it's an asymmetry. So basically, you know, uh, the program divergence of y to x is different from x to y. Okay, and it also has some nice dualities. So this this duality is very useful in this designing the optimization when you minimize some uh, program divergence for fixed one side. Okay. So uh, I will skip this. Is, this is some interesting detail of why we construct this function, but it, <coughs> yeah, this is very useful. Now, <clears throat> let's start to look at one particular example more carefully. So then I will give you some generalizations 
you know, focus on this kind of function. Now, why interesting programmer divergence is so-called KL divergence, okay? So since we are working on the AI, working on this, uh, uh, neural networks, we are also familiar with this function because sometimes we, in many inference problem, we just put some, uh, you know, parameterization into either P or Q, depends on, depends on the, the goal we have, okay? Now let's look at the KL in, in its parameterization free format at the beginning. So KL in the following is P log P over Q dx. So it's, so I work on the probability space. The P and the Q are given probability density functions. So basically, what does this KL does mean? It's very simple. So you have two densities, P and the Q. Then you consider the ratio of P and the Q and it takes the log of it and takes the average over P. So that's what you see. So basically, KL is the area of the quotient of a uh, difference between the quotient of the two density P and Q. And, and you, you take the log and you take the average. That's the KL divergence. Now, why KL divergence, right? Why KL divergence is so useful? So it has a lot of interesting properties. So basically it is a Bergman divergence and the Bergman divergence of the, I mean, Shannon entropy, the Shannon entropy is P log P stuff. And it's Bergman divergence in L2 space. So basically, if your computation, your parameterization, uh, is everything is in L2 space or Euclidean space, then KL divergence is kind of like a perfect uh, objective function. So, so it, it has a lot of properties. So basically, you know, by, by, by the way, there's a Y inside between KL is following. You can write your KL divergence like P log P to P log Q. Why you call it the entropy? The other one is called cross entropy. Okay, both of them are very important uh, functions. It contains some duality be behind entropy and cross entropy. It has a nice properties. Let's say it's asymmetry, as we say before in classical divergences. It is separable. The separable means like if P can write down like independent functions, uh, independent probability of different prob prob probabilities. Q is also written as like independent probabilities. Then the KL divergence can be write a summation of for each prob pro uh, marginal probability you sum all of them of the KL will give you the answer. Okay, this, this, this is majorly big because this log P is very nice. Okay, it is convex in L2 space with respect to P and Q. It's not hard to check, you know, you, the hashing of this guy P, this is, you know, poly definite. The height of log, this side is also pot definite. So it's it's very good in, in L2 space, okay? And it also has a so-called asymptotic behavior. So it's the high chain. So if you consider Q plus a, some additional term, you will gain some delta Q squared over Q. So asymptotically speaking, you will gain uh, the so-called fisher raw metric. And this is so-called, uh, this is, you know, uh, basically uh, this property. Here, okay, so it's the hash operator of the the feature geometry is the hash operator of the entropy. A P log P. Okay, so P log P the hash of it become one over P. That's why you have the one over Q here. Okay. So this is a some a property of KL divergence, but it, it's not the end. The KL divergence is also used is a building block for other divergences. Okay, so that's why it's so important. So at the beginning it's very Simple in some sense, then you can use this simple divergence to create generalized divergences. For example, you want to symmet this is not a symmetric to each other between P and Q, right? So then you can consider, you know, a symmetrized KL divergence, people call the JSON Shannon divergences. So basically, you just take the one half, the, the average of it in the L2 space and plug in back into the original KL divergence, okay, and take a one half of, of it. So in this sense, the, the, the symmetrized divergence, symmetrized KL divergence, it is symmetric. Between, so, uh, so DGS PQ equals DGS QP, okay? And this symmetrized the KL divergence is also has a very interesting uh, duality properties. So this is also the so-called original objective functions in the uh, deep learning approach 
uh, in the so-called general generative adversary networks. Okay, so basically we can see what happens here. So basically we have P and Q. Now K all just means that the average shape of the uh, log P over Q. Okay, so if you switch them, you will get something different. Now basically the Jackson Shannon divergence do this. You, you first you average P and Q. You call it R. Okay, then you take the you know basically you one half summation of them. So then this is symmetric to uh, both P and Q. Okay, so it's kind of like a generalization. Now you will say, oh, you can create a lot of other functions. Why the, why don't Jackson Shannon? The answer is yes. Basically, <laughs> they, are, they they have a table. They have like a, a lot of uh, interesting studies working on this. People call the generalization of programmer divergences. Why uh, this is so-called information geometry, and they can you know create a divergence function and still keeping their dualities. Okay, so basically the major the major goal here you know in their approach is like you, you have you should have KL divergence, you should have Fisher round metric, the Hessian operator, and you play with them and do some integration, you will gain. Uh, Different class of divergence functions in L2 space. Okay, so this is so each particular divergence may emphasize on some feature. I mean, they call the feature of some properties of the the operative function you want to create for your target for your data distribution. Okay, so that's the knowing uh, literature in the information side of and the uh, program and divergence side. Now you know we are working on. So called optimal transport. So this is how we enter the game. So optimal transport, you, you know, we, we know, you know, Frank definitely you know, right? And Matthew, we know. So this, so optimal transport care about the other type of distant functions, which are also useful in, in, AI, in AI nowadays. So for, for all these who may not that familiar, I just give you a quick uh, introduction. So I mean, we have experts here. You can also ask them. So. Uh, majorly speaking, we, we consider, you know, an uh, optimal way to move, you know, the dirt or mountain from one shape X to the other shape Y with, uh, to, to the other shape with uh, identity P, okay? So basically I give you two probability identities, P and Q. I want to find the best way to, to move them, okay? Now what is the best, what is the optimal, optimal way to, to move one identity to the other identity? Okay. Now, if we do it, if the movement, if we think in L2 space or, or, or in the Euclidean space, we are already finished finish the job because that's the Euclidean distance or L2 distance. But here we can see the mapping. Basically, when you really move it, you're not moving from, you're not in a global viewpoint, right? You move from like in the L2 space, in the Euclidean space to move things. You move in the so called with the, the mapping space. Basically, for each x, you push forward the one identity to the other one, and you, in this sense, you want to find the, the the best, in some best sense, like given the difference between t x and x squared, okay, the, and the average over the initial density. And you in this sense, you want to minimize all the mapping, okay, uh, all the mapping such that you know. T push forward Q equal to T. Okay, so you can move one identity to the other one. So this is a very famous problem. Okay, uh, has a very long history, like Mount and Kazanovich, and so on and so forth. So this is so called the Western metric, or some. Uh, so it defines the distance between P and Q using the mapping. Okay, so the, the, the interesting thing here, you change P and Q, you measure P and Q by the mapping itself. Okay, by using the, the difference of the mapping. Uh, it gives us uh, uh, the other details of metric uh, functions on property density space. We people call the optimal transport details, the vice versa metric, or uh, some more details. Okay, there are many experts here. Uh, here, you know, for simplicity, we just call the transport. Okay, uh, you know, it's similar. I'm mentioning this optimal transport structure, but you know, there are so many names. I call it a transport, or you can also call it the vice thing. It's your choice. So why optimal transport? Now this is a, uh, uh, this has been asked for many <laughs> uh, audience. Actually, you know, this is give you a particular distance 
which depends on distance on the sample space. So different from the classical, uh, you know, Euclidean divergence or Euclidean distance functions, all these uh, KL divergence functions, this distance measure the difference of things by their mappings, okay, Tx to x. So if I only have two delta measure, this is an extreme case, okay, very same extreme case which allows us to compute the closed form solution. So if I only have one delta here, one delta delta here, the other delta delta here, there's only one mapping to, to map them, which is x0 to transport to x1. So which means the distance between P and Q is defined by distance between x0 to x1, and then we take the square. Okay, so basically, if the two data measures are far away, I can see the difference of them, okay, using this kind of like transport type uh, distance. And but for KL divergence, if you define it on the boundary of the probabilities, which is data measures, so log of data has some problem, okay, and you take the integration, it also has some problems. So this is to be, we have to be worried about, okay. So KL divergence is well defined in whenever P and Q are, you know, this is the real log of peer work here, well defined. But you know, if we have some delta function, this is not that easy to, to you, you should define some weak formulation for this guy, but not in its original form. Nowadays, you know. Um, Lucien, so, there is a yeah. question for you. Okay, cool. Uh, this might be a good time to take it. Uh, sorry, what yeah, guarantee yeah, yeah. do we have on the existence of the minimal function T? To get the exist function. What kind do we have to have using function or minimal function? Okay, very good. So basically, you know, uh, this, is a, this, is, this is a typical uh, question in the optimal transport. So suppose P and Q is, you know, you have some finite uh, moment, right? And suppose omega is with a, a nice shape, which is convex. Then you, I mean, follow the book, you, you, you will find the answer like when the T exists. Okay, so actually, I think the, uh, this uh, yeah, this expert here, Brenier, they have a theorem to show you when on the which exactly condition P and Q such that the, the T is existing. Yeah, but so, this is there is an easy case when it doesn't exist, right? If if you have to split the mass, yeah, to yeah, yeah, from yeah. one to the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for example, if I have one one measure, I transpose two data measures, then the existence of the mapping function could have some problem. Yeah, for sure. So, so that's why, you know, there are different, uh, you know, uh, different relaxed formulation for this original form format. So, yeah. So, so here, I want, uh, there's one thing I want to say, you know, for this uh, uh, optimal transport distance functions and its relaxation, it's, it's, this is this, uh, useful in the inferences. Um, in this talk, I, I'm trying to extend this setting. You, you probably suppose the mapping exists. Let's see what happens. What can we extend? Okay. Yeah, very good question. <laughs> so, you know, this often trying to that are useful in, in the inference problem, and it's also in the so-called inverse problem. It's quite related to each other. There are many experts here. They are working on this kind of. Uh, applying this distance functions. So basically, ba what we do, we change it, like we change the original distance function, we try to change it to the, you know, to this optimal transport distance functions. And we still do the inference between data and P theta. And we try to optimize, that, uh, optimize this kind of function. So there are some benefits here, you know, benefits here. So uh, abstractly speaking, it has some, you know, nice duality from the sample space we can apply here. And it also can be so-called this displacement convexity. You have some new convexity of things to mapping theta to data. It's fairly, you, when you have a data major stuff, this could be useful because other methods may not work well. So but there are some drawbacks we have to face. Okay, number one is, you know, you have to see additional minimization. You don't obtain this guy automatically. Okay, you have to seal for the T. And sometimes you need the finite second moment of data and, and your, your, your model. This is also, you know, uh, you can say it directly because you, you do something squared on Q, right? If it's not, a, if, if your Q or P is not second moment, it's, 
it's not finite this is definitely something squared definitely will blow up okay so in this talk we are well ready to our major topic can we generalize it so we can we using both open transport details some open transport informations given by you know this mapping combined with the information interface we create we create a class of functions and we look at them to see what is the property for that so there are naturally two questions why is it called what are what are programming divergence in western space okay western space means Given this distance, given this probability function, probability space with this distance, we call that distance space, we call the Western space. And what is the KL divergence? Can we create the other type of KL divergence, the other type of function to measure P and Q in the Western space? We still use the Boltzmann channel entropy as a, like one of the guidance. Okay, there are some related studies uh, in particular, you know. The Guo, Hong, and the Yang, they work on the Western and the Bergman uh, type of uh, connections. And the Leiden and the Wong and uh, Yang and uh, Zhang, they work on some uh, connections. But here we, 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 we majorly apply this PDE type of idea, you know, it's, 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 it's fairly, we use the Western type of gradient operator or Western hashing operator to connect, to define this kind of uh, functions, okay? So this is a major, <laughs> part of the talk. So basically we define a, a, a so-called program divergence in the optimal transport space. Here, are, I'm seeing this is then two uh, discuss this uh, definitions. So basically give me some nice function F, okay, function which is probably can be a, because some, in some new sense of convex function. And we simply, we take the difference of them and we take some, you know, so for program divergence, it should be gradient of something times the difference of, uh, you know, between P and Q, okay? Now here, I, I omit a lot of details. Basically you can, everything is known in, the, in nowadays optimal transport theory. So basically the difference between P and Q in optimal transport space is characterized by difference of the mapping, okay? So basically we use the mapping to reloop at the original Bergman divergence. So this is the difference of the mapping. This measures how, uh, how your mapping and how, how, your, how your mapping and the current initial mapping, which is X, identity mapping. So this one gave you the difference between P and Q. And this guy gave you kind of like a greedy operator. But this is a little, uh, here, let me double illustrate. This is kind of like uh, L2, like you, Kind of like a Euclidean gradient between the for the functional f, and you take the additional gradient on x. This 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 entire red formula is kind of like Weierstrass gradient. So gradient operator in this mapping space. That you that, that is what you see. Okay. So this guy plays the rule of the gradient of some function times uh, the the difference between two functions. Okay, here T is a so-called optimal transport map function. So here is there some troubles following this uh, Christina's question. So here I assume T exists. Okay, I assume there's some mapping. Between P and Q, there exists a mapping. And uh, this mapping is given by the gradient operator. Okay, so basically, suppose optimal transport map exists, we define this kind of divergence. So this is somehow is kind of a trouble if I've if you, you don't have the uh, the mapping function, so this in this case we can we also have to define some relaxed version. But let's focus on this simple formulation at the beginning. We just call this DTF the transport Bergman diverge. Oh, what is the P? Very good. So basically, the in the optimal transport setting, the 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 optimal mapping function can be write written by a gradient function of other function. So essentially. These two equations together, you you, uh, you you can solve them, is, which is satisfies a, a modern equation. I guess so, the the way I understand the question is, um, what is the role of the subscript p? Does it denote dependence on the function p? On the oh, density? this okay, okay, very good. This in phase side, I'm starting from q to p. Okay, so okay. Oh, this is not this, okay, very, very good because yeah, yeah. So 
later I will show you some concrete uh, formulas. I have to make sure you know where to where. Okay, so if I say greater than x of phi p, I'm, I'm saying this is a, a mapping function, which which is t push forward q two p. So I call that one phi p. If I'm saying phi q, I'll, later I will show you. This is uh, the mapping of of q, which is uh, identity mapping. It's your it's just notation. Yeah. And another question. Yes. Um, is this definition uh, new, or has that been in the literature for a while? Well, this is this is a good question. You know, uh, in the book of Amrisha um, Gigli Savary, they have they define some uh, so called uh, sub differential stuff, sub differential on the what is it called so, uh, sub differential in the uh, Western space. They they. They didn't write this exactly, but they, they do have some similar formulation like FP minus FQ, you know, take the limit of EP. You know, they try to define the gradient operator using this. But here I just <laughs> somehow borrow their formulation, you know, just <laughs> create a, a functional. Yeah. Not a, entirely new, but somehow emphasize on this could be interesting. Okay. So later on, if I do particular examples and I, I write down the example, that could be. More interesting, but this is just very abstractly speaking. It is, you know, what what it is. Okay, this is a transport of Bregman divergence. <laughs> now, basically, you know, you, you know, this is a, a Bregman divergence. Basically, abstract speaking, I do some grid operator. Then I do some, you know, differential on the distance functions. Okay, and you take the difference of them. Okay, that's the so called the. Uh, transport Bregman divergence. Okay. So everything is, is fine. Now, then you can see these properties. The property that is also very, you know, uh, it's exactly follow the classical studies. So it's non negative. Okay. So if, if F is displaced on convexity, which means in this sense, it convex in right respect to T. Then it's non negative. And if it's strictly dis displaced the convexity, then you have nice properties. And then you, you have some hashing operator behind it. I do the tail expansion. And you have it asymmetry in general. Okay. So all the properties follow auto automatically. We just change the angle from the L2 space to this mapping space. And we just uh, follow the definition we just calculated. Here I, I didn't mention you. It also introduced a new, a interesting dualities. Okay, but otherwise a little bit uh, tricky. So I will not discuss it. Okay. So let's look at some examples. Okay. So we we what we go through example to explain you this kind of di divergence is different, totally different from L two divergence functions. So one type of example is you know we just do this second moment stuff. I take the energy of the second moment and I plug in my formula, this formula, okay? Then you say, oh, this is tx squared minus x squared minus two tx minus x times x, and you do some calculation. It's exactly the quadratic distance, tx minus x squared times q. And uh, here I have green uh, phi p minus green x phi q. So basically that's my notation issue, okay? Phi p means mapping, phi q means identity. So I'm starting from q, so it is just, X. Okay, so this is like a quadratic. Pro so basically, you can also do the disintegration. You get the pi. This is the, you know, the original distance function, uh, Western distance function. Now that you can understand the following thing. So basically, the transport of programmer divergence of second moment functional leads to the Western distance. Okay, so Western distance emphasizes on the second moment of your function. Okay. I mean, nothing tricky, we just the definition, we just plug in. Now you can do other thing. Let's say there are several important energies here. Let's, why don't we try some others? For example, we consider a linear energy. So maybe we're not, we're not int only interested in the second moment, we may interested in other moments. So you, if we plug in the formula, we are getting the following thing, which is D of V of green X phi P, green X of phi Q of QX. And this D of V is the so-called the class for the Euclidean Bregman divergence, okay, of the V. So basically, the vessel thing, 
this is uh, also observed by uh, uh, Guo Yitiao. So basically, Wesleyan kind of uh, divergence if I get the linear energy, it becomes a lift of a classical divergent functions. Okay. So everything is, will be the same. Okay. Now, how about the other energy? For example, interaction energy. So we're not only interested in the linear energy, right? We're not only interested in some uh, uh, second moment or like higher high order moment. We are interested in some, you know, kernel stuff. This is also a quite a hot area in optimal transport literature. So basically we can see some interaction kernel potentials, okay? Uh, which for example, let's say make the kernel to be, you know, X minus X tilde. You can see some Gaussian kernel, for example. So it's uh, symmetric between X and X tilde. Then you do this program divergence for this functional, for this quadratic functional, quadratic right with respect to P. Then you get a quadratic, you know, quadratic uh, divergence functional. Now, if you do the disintegration on this, you will gain the, like, a, like what the quadratic programming problem, which is of interest. Okay. Anyway, this is D of W tilde. W tilde is this kernel. And, uh, okay, and you do this uh, classical uh, divergence, define this, and you do, do double integration, then you will see this is so called the. Uh, versus the background divergence, okay? So this explains the formulation is definitely new, but for abstract definition in Franca, I would say this is not, <laughs> not a big deal, but for example, that's more interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now more interestingly, so this is this tool we just plug in the definition, we will see. More interestingly, this is so-called the, for the negative entropy, so we are like the information entropy, right? So entropy is the thing that more interesting because it's the linear algebra involves a lot into the divergence. The linear algebra of the mapping space. So we call it in the mapping space, it's very interesting. It's you, want, you, you have the push forward relation. And this also coupled with, uh, if, 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 if I don't use the second moment, if I use the entropy functional or some UPX times DX, and I plug in the definition, of this program divergence, I will create a kind of like a matrix program divergence function. And this matrix program divergence is explicitly given below. Okay, so basically, this is even the dimensional divergence function, it's still measure P and Q, the difference P and Q. Now it seems to you use the determinant of your mapping function and you do some interesting calculation, then you will gain a you will get a, a particular function to measure the closeness between P and Q, okay? So this is slightly different from the optimal transport in this quadratic setting. In here, you only use the gradient operator to measure the difference between P and Q. Now, it seems like in this, if, if I emphasize entropy into the, you know, to create a, a new function, this function will emphasize on the determinant of your, your mappings, okay? So this is just idle calculation, I will, I will not, uh, explain to you directly, but this just follow the definition. Now, I think I have uh, four or five more minutes. I will introduce the major uh, product of this talk. So I'm interested in particularly in the P log P, which means I'm interested in the Boltzmann channel entropy. And I look at this particular uh, matrix divergence type of functionals, what happens? You have 10 more minutes, Wuchen. Oh, I have 10 more. Okay, great. The I can explain. <laughs> okay, more, more interesting uh, details. This is what happens. So I call the transport uh, KL divergence or transport in relative entropy. So what I'm doing is the very direct. I input U to be P log P, and then I compute this matrix divergences. Then I will get the following one. This is the Laplacian of your mapping. Laplace, sorry, Laplace of phi p minus the log of determinant of the determinant of the hash of phi p minus the dimension minus d times q of dx. Phi p again is the optimal transport map. So basically t push for the q equals p and t equals gradient x of phi p. Okay. So also you can use the uh, mapping to write it. This is like a divergence of mapping minus the log of determinant of your gradient, gradient of your mapping. Minus D 
time to QX. So this is analog of KL divergence in L2 space. Now this is the KL divergence in Weisselstein space. Okay. Okay. Now I show you some nice properties. So recall that the KL divergence in L2 space is so nice. It has a lot of interesting properties. Now let us check. Suppose mapping exists, okay? Suppose mapping exists, let's check what happens of property does this function have, okay? Does it measure the closeness between P and Q, for example, right? You want, so we want to create some function to measure the closeness between P and Q. Does it do the job or not? Uh, different morphism on P of Q always exists. That's a very good question. Uh, not necessary. If I, as I said, if you P from, uh, you have a P, you measure to like, you, you have one data measure mapping to two data measure. This formulation may, may, may not hold. So this one, we have to relax this to the, you know, to this. Uh, so you have to transfer the way to, to relax things. Here, you can also relax it following that idea. Yeah, but that's why the formulation is a little bit uh, longer because you have to go to the this integration. So here, suppose you open front, you open front of whole side, you have a nice mapping to play with. So this, this formula, formula wise, it could be easier. Oh, how about this? Later I will give you Gaussian. For example, you have two Gaussian, then uh, two Gaussian with uh, like, you know, covariance is po definite. Then this is always okay to, to see this formula. Yeah. Yeah, very good question. You know, so far, I'm just looking at it in this simple format at the beginning. Yeah. So then, I want to explain this is essentially a transport plus Bregman plus entropy. So I have three properties. In the old days, the KLW don't have the transport side to play with. We have the transport side. So basically, you know, we just, you know, we just use the mapping definition. We write down this marginal p equation. We plug in to formula, and we try to figure out which one corresponds to the entropy, which one corresponds to the cro analog of cross entropy. Okay. So the nice thing here, you have some log to play with. The log is very important in my opinion. Okay. Log to bridge to make things somehow have a separable property. So basically, I play this formulation. Believe me, this is algebraic calculation. This is then you will see this is the entropy, and you have some this red, this blue term. This term is the new type of cross entropy. Okay, there's some nice duality. I will not show it here, but this one plays the similar rule of the cross entropy in L2 space. So basically, you the major issue here, you 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 plus Laplacian of your mapping, sorry, Laplacian of your phi into the game, and you minus the, the dimension d. This is called a transport cross entropy. Okay, then you can just simply check the following uh, properties. First of all, the it's non-negative, the the uh, transport care difference. It is it can measure the difference between P and Q. It has some po problem. I have to say it's it's only measure like the the Hessian, the Hessian of the phi, which is the grid, which is the, the gradient of your mapping. So it. It equals zero only when gradient of mapping equals zero. So it, in other words, it's up to the mean shift. This is unique between P and Q. Okay. So D T K L P and Q equals zero if and only if you know up to a shift after constant shift, they are set. So there are some slightly drawback here. The separability. So basically you can you can check this because you have some log here, everything of separability still holds. So it's, this is nice. And you have some, you know, if you do tele expansion, you will gain some uh, transport type of uh, Hessian metric. Okay, so this is very important in the in the entropy method that we we work with Franka before. So this is something useful for this uh, connect to the PDE analysis uh, uh, we we had done before. And more importantly, in my opinion, it could have some new convexity. Remember that the KL divergence, KL or reverse KL. If you write in L2 space, it's always convex. It's very nice. But if you look at the, at the mapping space, it is, it is only convex for some particular Q or particular P, okay? So it has some properties. But for this 
construction, it is always convex right with respect to P, but it may not be convex with respect to Q. So because program of this, the convex is automatically built in because you, you write it in that way. Yeah. So, so this, this could be some potential advantage here. Okay, so since I have three minutes, I give you some more concrete example to, 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 to let you know we are not, a, you know, this is not, not that too abstract. So let's say one dimensional space. So in one dimensional space, in one D, this equation is solvable. Basically the mapping, uh, this modern P actually is solvable. So, so you can see of the green XP by the, you know, the, the, the cumulative distribution is inverse. So, so this equation is totally integrable in one D. So in one D, the transport KL divergence can be written as follows. It's gradient of cumulative distribution is inverse and writing in this so-called, uh, what's the name? Itakura it, 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 Sato divergence. So <laughs> KL divergence, it is very similar to the uh, Itakura Sato divergence. Okay, so this is not that surprise because if you have the entropy, if you write into mapping, it becomes a, you know, this a negative log function. So things can be changed. So that's why you have to say this. And the KL divergence, if you use the cumulative distribution, it is like this. So these two functions actually have some nice analog to each other. Okay. So you, you, you measure things in, in different way in this gradient of the, basically you, you measure the same by using the gradient of the inverse cumulative function. That's the transport KL do. So this, this, in this sense, is, this is convex in mappings because you know, this gradient of this guy is similar to the the mapping. So it's not that surprising. It, it is convex in gradient X of FP inverse. Okay. But not, not, not in the other variable, okay. only in one variable it's convex. And also you can do it on the Gaussian, you know, on Gaussian, it seems more interesting. Everything is closed, okay. In Gaussian, phi, you, you can, you know, this, this one is also saleable. And then everything is, can, can also be right on explicitly. So DKL in Gaussian becomes, you know, this is the entropy guy. This guy is a difference, okay. Transport one, you do some one half stuff, okay. You have some linear algebra to compute for the amount of equation for this. For, for this mapping space, a lot of one half inside minus the, the, the dimension. And KL double is L2 space, you just take the simply trace of difference of sigma x sigma y minus one half of D. Okay. So from here you will see the difference. Okay. So again, I want to say if you use the mapping to do the inference, suppose the mapping is four mapping, this is the convex with respect to the first variable. This one may not do that. You only for particular, you know, displacement convexity kind of py, you, it will do the job. Okay. Okay. So one more minute. Okay. <laughs> I just say also you can do you can use this KL to uh, you can play with this concept to 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 expand to explore the, <laughs> this construction. For example, the Jensen Shannon nowadays. We can also do that. Basically. You do this DTKL, DTKL, and you do this RP, and you symmetry tries it by using the mappings. It's one half of mapping. Basically, you don't you, you think everything in Western space instead of like in this L2 space. Then you can construct Jason Shannon divergence. And we call this, sorry, this is TGS to be transport Jason Shannon divergence. Again, you can write down, I mean, as I said, you can, we can write down the closed form solution in 1D and in the, uh, in the Gaussian distribution. So let's give you some examples. Basically this one allows us to see carefully what happens if I use the mapping to parameterize P and Q, what happens. This one definitely convex in this first variable. But this one, this, this one is related to the mapping. The, 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 the P, the C of, I mean, not related to the mapping. So, if you do classical AI, not using mapping to parameterize function, classical Jensen channel entropy, all this function works very well. But if you want to use mapping related one, and this one is slightly natural, at least in one you can see it very clearly. We can create some function to fit in to see, it still give you some nice 
uh, functions. Now, the last example I will give you is the Gaussian for Jensen channel and uh, transport Jensen channel and Jensen channel. For optimal transport ones, it has a closed form solution. Since everything in Gaussian, in mapping space in Gaussian, everything is closed form. It's one half middle. So, sorry, this one is also closed. But for the L2 sense, in L2, if you do the mixed Gaussian, like you have two Gaussian, you take the, the one half of it, you don't have a closed form solution. So basically, in, L, in the mapping space, there's definitely interesting to play with some mixed Gaussian or some, uh, not, not mixed, some average of things could be also uh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's all my talk. Thank you for your attention. So basically, we designed some divergent function to look at some uh, examples. Hopefully, we can design some algorithms using this kind of uh, framework. Okay, thank you.